Yes, we don't show again another brand new Ororo day. When I say, uh, okay, know it to be Ororo, Ororo mean new. Shine, shiny day. Now, so we don't take show today again on top your number one chairman, who don't get TV station, was Obia Max TV. Now, for that, we bring all the Mata Mata assists can give you. That's why we pin like pin a four, round like roundabout, and we balance like balanced diet. On top, the Good Morning Niger show extra. Now, so it be. My name never changed. My name still remains Ochuko Omiragwa. Now, me be the man who say make it be like that for national peace, equity, and justice to reign based on tradition. Igwe, gwe, gwe. You think of me triple shift, not to do you. I must listen to my elders. And they say make I they always take my Agbalumo juice before I start the show. So, my go take, to do and I go mix her with old Dara juice. Agbalumo and old Dara juice. This is to clear my truth. So that when I come back, I want to talk to pastor. You get, you, get, you get to arrange yourself for oh, so I need to go drink first at the cover. Now go anywhere with the show. <laughs> Welcome back again. Uh -huh. Welcome back. We are ready now to face the matter. Uh -huh. Today, no need to waste time. We want to look on matter we consign. We won't go the religious angle, yes. We won't look religious tolerance and interfaith, interfaith dialogue. Now make a break and down. When we talk about religious tolerance, we they talk about how me if it take, how me if it accommodate you, understand your belief system, and still live with you, despite the kind of faith where you believe, you believe go here, you believe go right, you believe go left, all those ones not supposed to be our burden. We suppose how if it live together as one. How me if it overlook you, even if you the talk so kind things will not go down well with myself. I go see say, well, make us still live with you in peace. How if it take live like that? How if it be the other man religion? Say, okay, mm, even if they behave like this, if, no problem, I'll still live with him because I respect him with his own faith. How if it take live like that? And where the, the problem they come out from, where say somebody will say, hey, this person, you talk like this about my own God, so I'm not go here again, you must go down. Why be like that? Why this person go to talk, come here, the same Bible when all of us owe for our hand, though, they that the same Bible, so this one feels say, now so my own be, this one they say, now so my own be. This one they see another thing where God tell and that one say God tell and again another thing. I'm not gonna know whether and the Bible tell me say my God is not an author of confusion. That now what we want to trick our eye put me we balance them today and we get on no get pastor where they they are here with us where we just put perspective they try to balance them up so that we will understand well we get no other past no other person you no know, say that pastor either day my matter I want say one no other pastor. No other pastor than Pastor Shewu Afolayan. Shewu Afolayan, you are welcome. Thank you so I much. I greet you, sir. Thank you for having me. I've learned something new today. Ah, Kabe, tell me what you learn. I beg, I want to. The meaning of Ororo. I always thought Ororo means oil. But now you give me another the meaning. Shine. Shine, new. Yeah, new. <laughs> <laughs> I hear people use it. It's today I'm interpreting it correctly. So thank you for having me. Ah, thank you, sir. Wonderful. Thank you for coming. Out of your busy schedule, you still cover time. Say, no, you must come talk about this thing because yeah. this thing they turn to cancer. They eat us so mm. deep without we even knowing. Mm -hmm. when, when they look at your face, but mm. the thing they go so deep. Now, so they make we even look at Now, first of all, we go first of all try to establish what it be religious tolerance. Mm. We will first look that word, religious tolerance. I can try to explain that in my own way, but, but now, I just want me to just. Religious tolerance, hmm. very interesting. Can I just tell you a little story from my own experience to ah. break this thing down? So, um, I grew up in a town called Isain. Isain is about one hour drive from Ibadan, you know, mm. your state. So, and it, at, at, at the time I was growing up in that town, it was a predominantly Muslim society, Muslim, you know, uh, Islamic in nature, with the girl, and mm. the majority mm. are Muslims. Uh, not only that, the house where I grew up, our fence in my house, the other side of our fence is what they call Igboro. 
<laughs> you know what that means? No, I'm not the no forest, breaker, The forest of the of Oro, Oro Forest was right behind our house. Hmm. So, and of course, we, we are Christians. So we are Christians, we are surrounded more by Muslims, we share fence with the traditional Oro people. Oh, Not yeah. just the, the, uh, the real festival. But till today, I have not experienced love, communal living, and you know, people living peacefully together better than anywhere else, better than he's saying everywhere else I've been. Isain remains a place where I, I see people of diverse faith, people of diverse belief, living together in harmony, people really genuinely caring for each other. I remember those times, if we do anything in my house, and say maybe somebody celebrated birthday, and you know the people in our, na our neighbors got to know that we celebrated birthday without calling them, it would mm. be serious fights. That, ah, mommy, how can you do this? You did not call us to come and wash plates, to come and cook rice. That was the community I grew up in. Mm. Anytime they are doing the layer or any of the Muslim uh, 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 celebrations, mm. in my house we don't cook. Mm. I, we always do what we eat because we have so many friends who will bring, uh, you know, the meat and the ram yeah, and all of that. Everything. For that day, we are not doing any cooking. And it's the same thing when we are celebrating Christmas as well, we also share it. So it is now that, you know, growing up and living that time, and I'm seeing how people are weaponizing religion to put people against each other. And people are now saying, because you don't believe in my God, you don't have a right to exist in this world. Uh, it's a calamity that we must face and we must you know, see it for what it is, which is the work of the devil. That cannot be from God. Hmm. God is a God of peace. And Bible says in 1 John chapter 4, verse 20, it says, if any man says, I love God, but hates his own brother, Bible says that person is a liar because you cannot hate the God's representative, which is human that you can see, and claim to love God that you cannot see. Because there is one commandment that we all have which supersedes every commandment, which is to love your neighbor as yourself. Hmm. That is the basis for religious tolerance. It does not matter what anybody believes, how they pray, where they pray, what they wear, how they, you know, whatever kind of God they want to believe in, since you are breathing in oxygen and you are a human being just like I am, I must tolerate you, I must respect you, I must allow you to be who you want to be and do whatever you want to do. Hmm. How does religious diversity fit a contribute to a vibrant city, a vibrant society, a vibrant country? Religion is supposed to be something that is supposed to help us to live better, to live well as a society. Religion is supposed to contribute immensely to the peace and harmony and development of the society because there is no religion that you go to. Jesus is known as the Prince of Peace. Mm. Islam is known as, you know, uh, the religion of peace. Even our traditionalists, if you listen to them very well, a lot of them, they proclaim peace as the underpinning principle in almost all religion that we are aware of. So if we, even if we pray differently and we believe in different uh, scripture or, or whatever, the fact that we all have peace and we all, there are some moral standards that you will find in every religion. Mm. Therefore, if we call ourselves a really religious society, uh, the moral standard in our society should be very high. And if our moral standard is very high, things like corruption should be far from us. Mm. And when you remove corruption, do you know that corruption is one of the main bases for poverty? When you remove corruption from a society, you will reduce poverty considerably. When you remove corruption from a society, you will find excellence in that society. So what we, when we call ourselves religious society, our religion is fake. If it does not lead to peace, peaceable living together, if it does not lead to development, if it does not lead to righteousness, being entrenched in our institutions and in the way we deal with each other, if it does not lead to truth, it is fake. That religion is fake because religion is supposed to contribute to how we live together in harmony and how we develop and become strong. You don't talk about removing corruption in any society, the mm. people that go, that go live well. Now, what would be the place of religion in politics to foster the growth of a country? Hmm. Uh, it, is, it is part of why Nigeria is the way uh, our country is right now. We, instead of religion, playing a role to checkmate the corruption in politics. Sometimes religion, religion has been used to even contribute to the corruption in politics. 
politics all over the world has been hijacked by men and sometimes women who are selfish and self-centered, who are driven by their own ambition mm. and what they want to do and become. If you check it, and it's not just, it's all over the world. For whatever reason, people who really have a true heart to serve the people, you find that they are in the minority in the political system. Mm. So when we, that is where politics is, religion is supposed to be the checkmate. The religious leaders and the religious people are supposed to be the one to be the moral conscience of society who are going to check the politicians and say, you can't do this. This is not right. We're not going to, to accept it. Religion is supposed to be part of what contributes to the voice of the people in politics. So mm. that the politicians, they don't have a free reign to just do anything anyhow. Because they know that people have a voice. The fact that they are religious, they are religious means that they will not uh, go on on certain practices with you. They will say no. They will reject it. And that's what you find in some certain societies that are not as religious as quote and unquote, as Nigeria. And there is no society that is working, that the voice of the citizen is not strong. When the voice of the citizen is not strong, the, the political class will do anything they like. Mm. Religion is supposed to give strength to the voice of the citizen as the conscience of the nation. To say, yeah, so, you can't do this. Sometimes, do. Um, some religious leaders, then, they come as I call speak, but people, they tell, they say, not because I a religious leader with politics, carry your mat to go, go your, your church, your, church, your, your mosque. mosque, your shrine, anywhere, anywhere. where you did. carry mm. your mat, go there, leave politics alone. Yes. It's supposed to be like that. People have always tried to remove God <laughs> from the society just mm. so that they can do anything they like. Mm. That's, that's mm. Always, mm. That has always been. We always want to, uh, nobody wants to hear God. Why? Because when you bring God in, everybody, you know, but let's, we are not in church, well, this is not a mosque, let's just, so that people can Okay, do so the religious side, they bring selfish. that conscience. The religious are supposed to bring that conscience, they are supposed to bring that godliness into what is going on, to say, we are human beings, this is what is expected, this is how you are supposed to treat God's image. These are not just numbers, because that's what politics want to do. Everybody wants to treat everybody as numbers, religious are supposed to entrench the idea that these are human beings, this is what is expected, this is the least standard in terms of how you treat another human because they represent God. But sometimes uh, the way some religious leaders have also played into politics has also en enabled people to be able to speak against them. When religious leaders become so partisan... Uh, mm -hmm. Now that know, part I even won't dive into because yes. we see what we happen during the election, yes. the various mm. religious leaders that they mm. talk from all the sects, mm. not just only the Christendom. Yes. Using using their their platform as a tool, mm. a political tool to foster mm. maybe for X Y Z yeah. because of their interest with one or two persons and all that. Yeah. So, in that kind of situation, those kind of things they come up. How? What you talk about? Uh, uh, as religious leaders, uh, I would not want to sit here and judge anybody for their action because no, we can just look at them. Uh, on, a, on, a, on a general view. Yes, on a general view to, yes. to drive home a point for, yes. for development in our society, to, for us to coexist uh, as uh, one. Yes, so on a, from a general standpoint, mm. religious leaders are expected to be apolitical. They are expected to be, uh, they are not expected to be partisan, to say, oh, I'm pushing this agenda, I'm pushing that person's agenda, or I'm for this party, or I'm for that party, on a general view. So now in a, However, in a situation where a political leader, mm. a, a religious leader, now make I will take him, you be Christian, but I think I come from the biblical point of view. Mm. The time of the, um, the, um, the, um, um, yeah, the prophet, when David, yes. God wants to appoint another, another person. Another Samuel. Another person. Mm, Samuel went to meet Yes, Samuel. Yeah. Thank you. So. Prophet Samuel, yeah. go meet Saul. Go yeah. tell and say, look, your David, way not the place God, God has replaced you. God wants to appoint another person. Mm. Now, in that kind of situation, now still, the man of God, now still go, they go talk like that. If now, like nowadays, now, mm. if the man of God constantly they tell the president, now say, you not be the they're person no for the, the person. people. They're not going to say they're partisan. Mm. So, so if they say, no, not be you God want. Mm. For where I see I'm from, God wants X, Y, Z kind person. of person. Mm. 
They're not going to say, oh, mm. you don't yeah, decide yeah, this, yeah, person. this person. Which you is, don't which take, is why you are a partisan mm. pastor, exactly. political pastor. Yeah, you know, that's why I started by saying, I won't sit here and just generally condemn anybody for taking some certain actions. The role of a religious man. leader. Because as religious leader, we also understand, at least I understand as a, uh, for, from Christianity, that mm. God speaks to leaders. Okay. God, God, God leads the nation sometimes through the voice of his prophets in, mm. the, in, in the nation. Yeah. God can give direction. Mm -hmm. uh, however, we understand as well that the spirit of the prophet is subject to the prophet. What does that mean? It means that even when God says, oh, this is the person that must, that I've rejected this person, this person I've anointed, there is still a place for wisdom mm -hmm. to manage that information in a manner that does not destroy the nation, mm -hmm. that can still be edifying to the whole nation, sensitive to the realities of mm -hmm. what we're dealing with. Mm. So that at times is missing in the way some people have, you know, spoken to say, oh, God told me that this is what will happen or this is not what will happen. This is the person that God has rejected and all of that. There's, the, there's that place of God speaking to his prophets to lead the nation and give direction. But like I said, there's a place for maturity and wisdom in managing that information appropriately. Beyond that as well, religious leaders, let's not forget, they also are supposed to represent godly values. So when we have candidates or, or groups, political groups, mm. where it then looks like one group represents a certain kind of value system mm. and another group represents another kind of value system mm. that mm. maybe aligns more with the godly values that political leaders are supposed to champion. You may then find that they may find it necessary and it's within their jurisdiction to say, you know what, it is clear that this person's value system is not a godly value system. This person aligns more with the godly, godly value system that we subscribe to. And therefore, because of value alignment, I can indicate that this is the person that the nation should vote for. That can be, again, similar to the issue of being, being led of God to, 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 to direct the nation. There is, must be wisdom in the way, even that, in the way that Elias manages that. When we even want to say, okay, this is because of value, this is where we should vote. There is still wisdom in managing how a, a religious leader uh, indicates that. We must not be so uh, godly, quote and unquote, that we lose sensitivity to what is happening in our terrain in terms of how we manage information because leaders, a religious leader is still a leader. Mm -hmm. And whatever a leader says, uh, must be coded with wisdom so that it does not destroy. Thank you. Well, well, this is a very sensitive issue. And from the Bible standpoint, God say not give us the spirit of fear, but of love, of boldness, and of his sound mind. mind. Now, there are discretion coming. Mm. But then we still get matter. We go took our eye put, especially this interfaith. How if it take us, if it bridge divide, and also bring about harmony, or how if it destroys as a nation. We'll go check that one if we come back from this small chicken break. So not go anywhere because we is coming back. <music> Welcome back. We still sit down on top of the Good Morning Nigeria show extra. And with the talk matter and matter since we consign religious tolerance and interfaith dialogue. Now, we don't despite the religious tolerance side. We want to check our eye for interfaith. This is not my faith. This is not your faith. As if it take bridge us, help us. That's not what we want to check our eye put. And we still get Pastor Sheung, still did the house here with us to the poor mat for inside the matter. Now, make I turn my head, go meet Pastor Sheung. Pastor Sheung, a for lion. Ah, nice name. Does anybody hear that name, a for lion? I call you me by that Nollywood <laughs> uh, producer. Yeah, everybody asks yeah, me whether yeah. it's my brother. Oh. Yeah, so he's, not, he's, he's not my brother. Well, maybe mm. he's uh, trying to form my brother, but it's not ah. my brother. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so, so, make we look this um how Interfaith conversation fee bridge, fee bridge divides and promotes harmony and also cause a serious problem inside our society. Mm. Uh, we, must, we must be aware and we must be enlightened. Uh, because if we are not, uh, the other people, they will use our faith against us and they will make us to face each other and destroy ourselves so that they can achieve their own aim instead of us 
working together. Um, in a society like Nigeria, where there's a lot of poverty, especially in the third world countries, mm. a lot of people have lost their dignity as a human being. A lot of people have lost touch with their humanity. Uh, poverty does not only affect the body, it affects the mind even more. Mm. Uh, and when you have a country of over 200 million people like ours and many other countries in, in, with serious level of poverty that we have, that is, a, that is a very good playing ground for people who want to achieve their own uh, selfish agenda, mm. which is how they will you know, bring up, uh, they will ride on that you know, notion of religion to say, oh, this person hates us, we must fight them, we must kill them, we must destroy them, just so that they can use that power to divide and rule. We must be aware, otherwise, uh, you know, a lot of damage will be done. However, as people of faith, whether it's Christianity, whether it's Islam, whether it's more traditional faith, we have a lot more in common that, than we have a, 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 that are not in common. We sometimes lose sight of that. You know, the fact that we even believe in the existence of God, that mm -hmm. is something, and that is something that can bring a, a majority of Nigerians together. I believe, you know, that Nigeria at least is still a country where a lot of people believe in the existence of God. Yes, the way they yes. pray and practice that religion may be different. So that is supposed to be something that brings us together. We all shop in the same market. We all bring in the same oxygen. If you are sick, you need the same doctor. You know, and you know what happens when we go to school and somebody is teaching you chemistry or physics. You don't ask the person, are you a Christian? Are you a Muslim? Mm. Nobody ever asked. For me, some of my best teachers going to, uh, when I was in school, some of them are not Christians. If you enter the, an hospital and you needed somebody to treat you, will you first of all say, ah, before you give me that injection, let, tell, tell me whether you are Christian or Muslim. For where you, you are sick, survive, you, want you want to, to be well. Uh -huh. It's the same thing. So let's realize that all of us are facing this problem. Yes. And therefore, we are supposed to be working together. And we must be like God. Look at God. There are people who don't believe that God exists. But guess what? When the sun shines, it still shines on them. Mm. When God is releasing oxygen, it still gets to their house. Mm. When the rain comes down, it still... If down. some of us are like God, as they are eating that food from the ground, they will collapse and die. You just withdraw oxygen from their own, <laughs> from mm. their flats. <laughs> but look at God. Both the godly and the ungodly, those who believe he exists, those who don't believe he exists, those who disrespect him, everybody, it continues to take care. Some of them are even very rich. So we must, if we say, I, I say I'm religious, the way to prove my religion is to be like that God mm. who has a wide enough heart to accept every humanity and work with them and cater to them and help them and not segregate and say, oh, Osinye cannot pass that country because they are, they are working against me. No, no. So, and when we come together, there's a lot that can be achieved in terms of development, in terms of food, for, uh, 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 I mean, just ensuring that the right value system is entrenched in our society, in terms of holding the political class to, to good moral conscience, in terms, of, in terms of developing family life and children and growing them to become the best that they can be, there's a lot that can be achieved together when we work together. Make we look at um, challenges for inside religious coexistence, the way all of us, they live together. What would be some of the common, um, the common misunderstanding and how we fit it, address them uh, there as a are, people? There are different misunderstandings. Uh, some will say, oh, Allah is not God. Uh, their, their own God is not our own God. Some will say, oh, uh, one book is correct, one book is not correct. We feel just capture the ones when it be like, say, we see most recently in so mm. many ways, make her address the other faith now. Since they call Bible, Bible, Christian, 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 make us still call the other faith to me, not be like, say, no, only one side that it. Mm. Now, most recently, they kill some people mm. just because of, say, they say they blaspheme. I, I, I don't know the degree of the blasphemy, but, but they take God law into their own to kill a fellow mm. human being. God is now waiting the newspaper, a day, the public domain. They, even if the Sultan of Sokoto condemn them openly, and some of their imam condemn them, say, no, that not be the way. That not a common thing when we all don't see. Mm. Some of their scholars, they call into our program, they condemn and say, no, that is not Islam. You mm. don't kill. Mm. So, like all, all, all those kind of things, how if you take address them? 
I, I appreciate that uh, some of the videos that came out to condemn mm -hmm. that kind of killing. But you and I know that it's not the first time, it's not the tenth time, it's not the hundredth time. Of course, of course. We also know that before somebody will get up and say, I want to kill somebody because they blaspheme, they were taught to do that by somebody. Somebody has taught their brain to mm. put that mindset in them. There is no human being who grows up normally as a human being who would suddenly wake up and say, because somebody is blaspheming, whatever you call blasphemy, that the next thing you want to do is to kill that person. No, but no, kill if no he's he just did like that. Now, but Belef is just, just brain killing because even uh, he better not do kin anything now. Because he's just very skilled. So See, if he just come like that. Uh, whether it's Cain and Eber, or whether the people doing it in our country, there is the same thing. Something must have touched your brain mm -hmm. before you will just get up. People they verse for each other, not be today now. People they verse. Jealousy. Jealousy, they happen. Different just they the pass, I don't like his shoe. I don't like the whole lady shine. People they praise her and wear well, well. uh, So on just top of verse. that, have you seen, have you seen somebody say, ah, because I don't like his shoe, I go kill the person. If, somebody, if that thing happens, you already know that we need to check this person's brain. This is not normal behavior. Okay, now what you do, Kane, now? It's just, it's just, you say, you be just the collector, the shine. It's just like, so only you got like past it. Uh -huh, only you. Everything, it's just like, so only your own, they go away. Again, it's just best for her. Again. That kind of thing, they happen amongst us now. Uh, just you say this person, they pass it. Just be like, only you, they prosper. Next, you just grow more careful. The day when you get the opportunity. If you, you say, and they die, say, for fear, pass it. No, may just die. Go pass. Anyway, you and I, know that this thing, the way you said it, if that is how it happens, maybe half of us in this room will not even be alive to start with. <laughs> because there's nobody here who will not have gone through a situation where somebody is beefing you for something, mm -hmm. or something like that happened, or somebody is being praised, we are in mm -hmm. the office, somebody wins the award, or somebody is the best this or best that. Mm -hmm. How many of your friends have just got up before and decided that, oh, since you are the best in our class. I must kill you. Do Maybe you? opportunity not there for some mind. But then, uh, the thing will really be an extremist is, case. Exactly. No, it really is look. an extreme behavior. Mm -hmm. So we, it's OK to come out and condemn. But if we are being serious, we must go beyond condemning. Mm. If you put this cup here now, and the thing falls, and the water falls and all, of course, we'll clean the water. And, but when next somebody wants to put something on this table now, we'll check it first. How did that call for? Was it was it was something wrong with? It's the most basic thing to solve any problem. Mm, so we must ask mm. ourselves: these people who just wakes up and you know kills another human being, you know cold-blooded murder in like uh, in, in, you know right in front of everybody. How did they get here? Who is teaching them? What are they teaching them? And what are the structures that are creating that kind of mindset and pushing it into people's mind? We must address that. Hmm. Otherwise, it's going to happen again. And we must not behave as if it's just, it's just on people, they just call themselves, they say, ah, let's go and kill. No. Okay, no. now you talk about the mind. Yeah. Because they say destroyed mind go destroy the man. And mm -hmm. the destroyed man go go outside and destroy community. Exactly. Now, there is something, nature, they're above vacuum. Mm -hmm. They pick that signal from somewhere. Yeah. Now, what will be the role of the religious leader in fostering peace? In the society, what will be the role now? The religious leader need to do mm. to cut this menace. Will be like say the only the apple. Mm. Thank you. Na nature abhors vacuum. Mm. When a mind has not been curated correctly, you know what the Bible says about when you cast out a demon. Mm. It says that demon will go, will come back, come back and check. If he comes back and checks and sees that the place is clean and there's nothing that has occupied where he was casted out. He will not just come back and enter. He will go and call seven demons that are more powerful than him. So that he say, ah, this place, let's they come and enjoy. They can see day. Exactly. Flex. So education. That's why in the places where you find these things, you know, emmas are the places where there's lack of education, there's lack of economic opportunity, there's lack of, you know, uh, uh, basics that can make people have a life that has dignity, a life where they understand that they are also a full-blown human being. A lot of people don't consider themselves human beings again because there's nothing in the brain, there's no food in the body, and it, they are just a tool that can be used by anybody. That's mm. what is happening. So religious leaders must pay attention to that. Again, the tools to make some of these things happen is in the hands of the politicians. So religious leaders should, they should be, the, they, 
as a governor in a, in a state, a governor should be afraid that if I don't do something about the education, the religious leaders in that environment, they can work with the people to boot me out. That's what should happen. A religious, a, 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 a counselor must un, should understand the fact that ah, the power, some of the power blockers, blockers in these people are the churches and the, the pastors and the imams. Mm -hmm. They are part of the power mm -hmm. blockers. And they will hold me accountable to develop the community and make sure that people's lives are transformed. If I don't do that, I will not be able to return to my office. I will not even be able to do the four years. Where so in other words, it was a failure of the society if yeah. you partially trickle down to some of the religious leaders, we, some of them. The, the, the religious leaders have their own role to play absolutely, absolutely. And sometimes we are too shy. We sometimes we, we focus only on what is happening in our churches. The and spirituality. Mosques. Exactly, and, without and paying that. attention. And there's no nation. The, some of the most developed nations in this world, the developments were triggered by religious leaders. Everybody talks about uh, uh, MLK, Martin, Luther, Martin King. Luther King today. He was a pastor. Mm -hmm. But he used that pulpit and he used the influence he had as a pastor to galvanize society and, you know, the civil rights movement. And we all know, you know, what that, uh, how that helped the Americans and all that. So we must not be shy to say we are just focusing on people uh, praying to God and all of that. We must pay attention and hold the political class accountable and then ensure that people's lives are developed properly. Thank you. Well, well, be like say we go jump at one small chicken bread. But pastor don't talk one or two things when he be say he just pack or something from my head because religious leaders they get large role to play. With the shot Martin Luther King, I have a dream. But if forget saying I reverend for church, mm. he start to take get that dream which transform the black race for America. People like the Jesse Jackson, people like the Louis Farrakhan. Mm. For those ones that don't speak for the emancipation of the black race, so what our own religious leaders they do? Mm. Now politics never now. Do they follow politicians? Anyway, that now wait till we go see the chuka while I put if we come back from this small chickeny break, not go anywhere. The matter, the tie rapper. <laughs> Welcome back again. We're still there on top of the show. And we don't talk plenty, plenty. We concern religious. We try to look, dissect, and extreme. Look how it they affect us as a people. How we fit to coexist as one so that we go foster peace and bring development to ourselves through religious angle. And we still get our Ogbonge pastor, Sheung, for the house here. With the chukma, they put a dissect the matter one by follow to strike a balance for us to see him. It's supposed to be a two when he be say it's supposed to help us as a, as a society shaping us. But then, with the use them, right? That will be the big question when he be say we leave. In case you just join us, you don't miss. But you go stiff feet, grab one or two. As with the worker, they go, Pastor Sheo, thank you well, well. Thank you for having me. Now, make we look the place of the youths. Most recently, the final said, make we use this um, um, election which just passed for Nigeria, the 2023 election, as a case study. According mm. to INEC, even the youth, they constitute close to 60% mm. of the population. Mm. So, so, in other words, <laughs> now the youth, even many parts. Mm -hmm. Now, make we look how. The youth fit a shaping uh, the future mm. of interfaith dialogue. How mm. the youth fit a coming? Th thank you very much. Uh, the youth has a very important role to play, and um, uh, and we can see something is happening with the youth in Nigeria. Um, the median age in Nigeria is 17, mm. which means that more than half of this country are below the age of 17. Um, of course, 18 is the voting age, but the people that are even around that 18, 20 something, they are very plenty, just like you told us. Uh, there are two kinds of youth in Nigeria right now. We have the enlightened ones who, you know, they are on Twitter, they are on, you know, and all that. And then we still have a large block of people who are not that enlightened and they are the ones being used right now. They are the ones that you know the political. Uh, some of the political figures are still recruiting as thugs. You know, uh, some of them are still being recruited as religious mm -hmm. uh, estimates to foster violence in the society so that they can win the election. 
you know, uh, a video came out uh, uh, on social media some couple of months back, uh, weeks back. We don't know, you know, social media, you never know which one is Yeah, which, which one be one fake news. Or, where mm -hmm. one of the political figures was talking to some imams about violence and about different things, about the fact that, oh, we are going to make this state uh, an Islamic state and things like that. Some of those things, somebody, I don't, we don't know whether it's true or not. That's just to put that disclaimer there. It's, it's still about the youth. What the religious, what the youth needs to do right now is the people who are enlightened, they need to go and save the people who are not enlightened. Otherwise, if the enlightened one who know how to hide behind their phone to do the whatever it is they can do, and the ones who don't have any phone or data and they are being used to go on the street, if they both grow up like that, it's already happening. The enlightened one will not have a society to live in. So the people who are on Twitter who say I'm enlightened, I have my data and all of that, we must go beyond phone and go and educate the people and enlighten the people mm. who are not enlightened. So that together, we are the ones who owns this future. Some of the people that we are complaining about and all that, give them 20, 30 years. Some of them are, are gone. They've left the country. Whether there will still be a country, they don't care. Mm. They don't care whether there will still be a country. So the youth must understand that if anybody is fighting for Nigeria, it is their future that that person is fighting for. And if they are the ones that can fight for that future because they are the ones that will live in that future. Mm. In our fathers and uh, people, our, oh, the older people, they know they've done their bit, they are gone. All they are looking for is just how to continue to be relevant. Some of them, that's what they are looking for. So the mm. youth must wake up, not allow themselves to continue to be youth because if this country goes down, is their future that has gone down. Everybody knows it. You can go and national, naturalize in another country, but you is never the same. In US, for instance, it's in their law. Even if they say they give you citizenship, you cannot become a president. Mm. You, a naturalized citizen in US cannot be president. It's only for people who are born in US. So if you say, oh, I can just go and acquire, I have money, I go and acquire citizenship in another country and all of that, it's not the same. And it's good to travel, it's good to go and express other people. And that's one of the good things that the youth of these days, they have. They are, the, the, I mean, with social media, they are, exposed, they are yeah. more exposed than the older ones. But that exposure is only on one side. There's still mm. a large portion, as far as this country is concerned, and these are the ones that are being used to shape the future. We must rescue them from the hand of the people who are using them so that all of us can grow together and the potential of this country can emerge from that. Talking about education and awareness, how schools and institutions FITEC promotes religious tolerance? Schools have always been a, 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 a place where the society's mind is formed. See, the British, when they came to Nigeria and they colonized this country, there is a particular kind of country that they had in mind. There's a vision that they had for this country. And they want to achieve that, the way they want to achieve that vision is by giving all the kind of education, educational system that they left with us. It is to produce civil servants. People hear the word civil. The word they don't hear is servants. <laughs> the, the aim of the curriculum that the British left with us is to make people to be servants. They, were, they never created a curriculum for anybody to become business owners or to have creative ideas or to start your own thing employ labels, that, you will see that that thing is missing completely in our curriculum because that curriculum was created so that all of you can be servants, we can continue to rule over you for years and years. Thank God we rescued ourselves. We must now, by our own, by ourselves, create another curriculum that can make us to become the person that we want to be. American has what they call the American dream, and the educational system is created in such a way that you emerge to become the American dream. The Japanese, they have their own vision. Chinese, they have their 100-year vision, and the educational system is a tool by which they prepare their children to achieve that 100-year vision. Our own education, I just want to be able to read and write. I want to be able to work in an oil company and bank. It's more than that. We must be more deliberate mm. about mm. what is happening in education. Mm. And religious leaders have a role to play to put their mouth in that conversation because that is how you secure the future of a nation. Now, make we look one one very critical part of our society when they say we're not really they give attention to but they play a very vital role in the minds of the the youth cultural exchange how you say art music and festivals feel bridge bridge the gap between religious the religion them art and culture again is another viable tool that we're supposed to be leveraging 
to build our society. Leverage even by religious organizations and religious leaders. Uh, it is one area where as black people, God has given us a special gift in that area. I mean, anybody understands it. You know, some of the best musicians, some of the best artists, even in sports, black people are just gifted in that area. But there is no serious education to produce en masse, the kind of uh, capacity that we, that we have as potential. So as religious leaders, we must foster that. We must, we, we must enable that. And uh, for instance, in a church setting, that is a place where a lot of people's gifts and talent can evolve. Mm. Church is a church or a religious organization is supposed to be a place for free riaza, a place for free trial, a place for free education, where people have opportunity to practice their, 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 their to, to give, to express their passion, to express you know, uh, that gift without the restriction that will not be going. You know, for instance, if we are, if in Lekki here, for instance, if you say you want to do, you want to go into a studio to practice, uh, you know how much you will pay. Or mm -hmm. to say you want to play soccer or do something, you will pay a lot of money. But religious organizations are supposed to give people that opportunity to express that potential in serving God and then in serving people within the organization. And then they can become global giants that can serve humanity beyond the walls of their religious practice. Now, may I go on this one come as a, I can say, as a kind of, I would say, um, lesson, warning, or encouragement in all to us as a people. How individuals, me and you and every other one of us as a citizen of Nigeria, if they contribute to promoting a religious tolerance in our everyday life? I, I think we must practice humanity. Humanity. At the basics of any religion must be humanity. Whether you be, even if you're anti-religion, you are human. And humanity must become the, a religion that every religion must subscribe to, to, to just recognize that this is another human being. This person has blood in his veins just like me. This person has aspirations just like me. This person has dreams just like me. This person is probably suffering the same thing I'm suffering. That is on the level of humanity. What, the, what that means is that whether you are black, you are white, you are Christian, you are Muslim, you are traditionalist, we must not use our different opinion to, to interpret the realities of one human life. The fact that we disagree in one aspect of life, there are over a thousand or one other areas where we agree. And we mm. must we fight the areas where we agree, where we are the same, over and mm. above the areas where we are different. You know, in America, it's even worse. You know, some people, it, it, it's interesting how difference in opinion has become the identity that people take on. So for instance, I believe they were supposed to take uh, vaccination. Mm -hmm. Then they call those people the vaxxers. <laughs> you have not had that word. People who don't believe that I should take vaccination, they are the anti-vaxxers. Mm -hmm. So it means that if I believe in wearing brown shoes now, we have become a group of brown shoe wearers. Mm -hmm. And because you people don't believe in wearing brown shoe, we are no longer, that shoe has now divided us. If you want to play like that, the world is in chaos. What about the fact that you are another human being? You probably are suffering the same economic issue that I'm suffering. You're probably looking to get better with your own finances and with your life and with your family, just like I'm also trying to get better. You breathe in oxygen just like me. What about all of that? We must limit how we codify people because of difference. We will always differ. There are seven billion plus people and human beings human beings on this planet, there's not two of them that are exactly the same. Difference of opinion is, will continue to be our reality. But we must not judge another person by that. We must judge them by their humanity. So humanity yeah. is our watchword. Yeah. Wow, thank you, Wewe, for your word of knowledge where you don't give us with regards to religious tolerance and how it coexist as a people. Yeah. Thank you, Wewe. I will say a big thank you to you, Pastor Sheon Afolayon. Thank okay. you all for your time when you say you Thank give you. to us today. Anyway, my people, now don't see how my belief say you don't learn one or two. If you be that person, we won't help God fight. God fight. No, God created you to live in peace, not help God fight. He need to find people who go fight for him. He know he will own way. He take the settle in your case. And you go live, you go die. God will still remain God. 
Your papa don't die, go. God now still God. You go die, go. God will still be God. Your children will grow up, die, go. God will still be God. So why are you teasing that you want to help her fight? Like what they think. In short, I won't go as today. I don't close. Mm.